Um, so hi, my name is Kate Darchenko. It's actually Katerina, but I think it's, it's too hard. So it's, <laughs> that's why I'm Kate. It's my colleague Irina. Uh, so and we will work um, in uh, the next shuttle. So firstly, um, I will tell you about PR landscape and about political management landscape and about money on our Ukrainian market and also in. Uh, Moldova market and uh, other post-Soviet uh, Union um, practices uh, and main clients and about Ukrainian oligarchs and so on and so forth. And uh, then in Irina will tell you about uh, her huge experience in social responsibility projects um, and uh, also in uh, uh, projects uh, of uh, David Lynch Foundation and also in, uh, you know, not uh, NGO PR uh, and uh, Foundation PR. So and it's a big difference uh, in between our markets and European markets as I've been working before in London, Belfort and Jerry PR company. Yeah, so and it's, it's a really huge difference. That's why we, um, and so after your points, uh, we will discuss and maybe answer your questions. But. Um, um, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. Shall I, uh, um, because the beamer is not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, so we'll turn it off. off. Yeah. Uh, but firstly, I uh, wanted to um, to ask you what you mostly interested in. Uh, so you mostly interested in cases, money, uh, some communication practices with clients, uh, or um, what you actually wanted to discuss with with us. So maybe yes. somebody starts. Mm -hmm. Cases, cases. NGOs. And also NGO practice. Yes. Okay. And maybe also the way you operate in the in the yeah. Ukrainian market. Like yeah. mm -hmm. how do you when when a briefing comes in, what mm -hmm. what do you do? Mm -hmm. Like step by step, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some algorithm. Okay. Yeah. And what what else? Uh, you you have some departments uh, in your company, so. Uh, and if, if you have, please uh, orient me who work in what department, so maybe digital or PR or opinion leaders work or you work all together for projects, so how, all, all together yeah, for, yeah. for, for like yeah. Yeah. But we do have uh, um, um, native. <laughs> we yes. have sure. <laughs> it's our native department, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and we also have a creative department. Uh -huh. sure. uh -huh. yeah. And with native, we don't mean native English, but the uh -huh. na native advertising, uh -huh. uh, which is a new form of advertising where editorial content is made by journalists, and that you pay them to write about the brand, uh -huh. but yeah. in an editorial form. Mm -hmm. So not uh, an advertisement, mm -hmm. but, but like an, uh, a an story, article. an article. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see. It's, it's classical. In Ukraine, we buy also all the story, usual. but not the <laughs> usual yeah. way. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I know that this problem in the US or yeah. in UK, yeah, but, uh, but in Ukraine, it's, it's classical. And maybe the influence of, uh, of Instagram or other mm, big yeah, influencers? I'll, I'll talk yeah. about this. Ah, about, also about digital media and, and Opinion leaders, bloggers, this folder, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. social media. Prices, this, yes. Okay, okay. So let's start um, from the beginning, uh, and uh, I briefly. Um, um, I um, briefly uh, introduce the uh, work of our company. Um, so we have a huge department of political management, um, and uh, we're the biggest company who work in. Uh, um, you know, very hard cases. So it's political crisis cases, it's anti-crisis cases, and it's foreign cases when you um, must, for example, um, produce some stereotype uh, for customer or some stereotype for uh, voter and so on and so forth. So it's uh, not really classical thing. So classical thing, it's quite easy for us. Uh, but uh, when we, for example, take some tenders in multinationals, it's uh, like very hard task uh, between lobbying and PR, between anti-crisis and PR, between political communication and PR, or uh, between some hard tasks, for example, uh, new product creation here, here in Ukraine. Um, so, um, and uh, I, I mostly 
quite famous uh, professional in political management uh, because I have uh, U.S. education in this sphere mm -hmm. in George Washington University. Uh, so in and uh, in Ukraine, it's. Uh, um, quite uh, interesting situation because mostly people who work in PR or who work in political management uh, they uh, uh, self-educated uh, because after post-Soviet Union period we have situation when um, universities can't uh, engage um, people who do really practical cases to uh, work in educational process that's why people after um, after university uh, can't uh, provide good practical things and they haven't connections with media, they haven't connections with opinion leaders to do good work and uh, that's why mostly um, of professionals who work in this sphere, they all from, from education abroad or from, uh, you know, some practices from regions for example, uh, some person who do good PR work in Odessa can go to Kiev and work for big international company. Mm -hmm. uh, or a um, company take um, uh, some young professionals and they do uh, in the educational program in their company. For example, we uh, we work in the same way because we can't uh, find uh, professionals at market, and it's uh, basically a very huge problem. Yeah, <coughs> some people who have uh, good car, you know, and uh, good uh, presentation, they can go to a client, for example, the Ukrainian client, and said that oh, we are good professionals, but really they haven't background and they haven't uh, organized structure to. Uh, to do good, good good work and that's why I think 30% of our clients it's clients from other companies who can sell a uh, nice presentation but who haven't uh, you know structure for for, 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 for this case yeah or for sorry for interrupting actually yeah. most of the projects uh, they in our country they give to Katya because uh, she's one of just a few people who really work most of the people like to talk <laughs> they can talk very nice really <laughs> unbelievably nice but when when they face uh, really going some regions Okay, you come here, you came here to Odessa, but can you imagine uh, hundred small cities all over Ukraine? It's even a, tr a trouble and problem to get there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, they give to Katya, and she she really do and realize it. <laughs> <laughs> and most and most actually our politicians and oligarchs uh, directly or through somebody her clients. <laughs> um, yeah, in, in in political management, it's more deeply problem because it's. Mm, more narrow practices and uh, it's also very huge problem with communication of this type of clients from 19th you know from period of privatization but still but still uh, we uh, really work and uh, um, now we have big client uh, it's a candidate for president of Ukraine uh, and uh, we also have uh, clients for a year, like classical clients in uh, PR work, and uh, I will uh, tell to you some cases, uh, uh, maybe some with names of companies or associations and uh, some without. Um, and also I, I think that it's an interesting point that uh, we are members of Institute for Democracy and Development, like company and like professionals, it's an NGO for democracy development and for education, and uh, we are also members of um, uh, JR Professionals uh, Association, so we create JR industry um, and lobbying industry in Ukraine. Um, so I, and I also a member of international uh, community of political consultants and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, if you're really interested in about uh, this, about practices, you can find our YouTube channel and we have some lectures about it. Uh, so, but um, yeah, some information about uh, um, some information about money. Uh, so about. Uh, about uh, money in uh, PR, ma our office uh, prepares some 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 uh, data. Uh, so for this year, um, legal markets of PR uh, industry, 
it's well more than uh, 500 uh, uh, thousands of dollars. But uh, if you compare these numbers with dark markets of this uh, um, of this contract and with dark markets of political management, uh, price of one uh, campaign for candidate or one campaign for uh, political party it's from uh, 20 million dollars to 100,000 million dollars. So it's really big money and it's money from oligarchs, from some sometimes for some parties criminals groups and it's uh, really you know bags of cash like uh, in uh, the movie pleasant uh, bags. <laughs> huh? quite pleasant bags yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very big with cars sometimes uh, and uh, it's really a big problem because uh, for example this type of people can't work by uh, legal uh, PR work in Europe because they can't sign uh, agreements uh, and they don't understand why they can sign agreement for work, for example, in European Union. Uh, and uh, also so, uh, sometimes this problem with lobbying work, because it, it, as you know, in United States uh, they have very strict regulation of lobbying work and you can't do lobbying work like PR. Um, and uh, when you uh, when you foreign agent and uh, who know about uh, Manafort case? Uh, so it's it's a big scandal um, about political manager and lobbyist from the United States who work in Ukraine, and he take from Ukrainian oligarchs uh, more than twenty million dollars in cash, and he <laughs> don't want to pay uh, taxes in U.S. and that's why and uh, he is uh, main campaign manager of Trump. And uh, now on his trial, um, court said that he is guilty, and uh, he is guilty uh, on uh, some cases about lobbying of foreign agents, foreign agents from Russia and from Ukraine, from the Yanukovych period. And that's why, that's why I explained that uh, this data, um, it's uh, you know not uh, not exactly data that we can count because it's a dark market. And the main message number one that Ukraine PR work and uh, um, political management work it's mostly dark market. And when we like company said that oh no we we work by contract and uh, by contract on, uh, on budget and on our work it uh, sounds really very uh, Mm, very weird for mm -hmm. clients, uh, and it's 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 new culture. It's new uh, for, for other markets. So uh, you must understand that we're part of Europe, Europe of European Community, but we have uh, this type of problems really in Ukraine. And sometimes people don't have um, you know some LLC or uh, some points which we can. Uh, side this contract. So, for example, it's uh, person A, and uh, person A understands that you have responsibility because person A is um, a very influential person. And um, I think that many problems, it's, it's not about contracts with multinationals. So, of course, if you work with Coca Cola, or if you work with uh, Amway, or with Avon, or other companies, they work as usual with compliance, with classical agreements, uh, uh, with you know your client and so on and so forth, um, as usual. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to earn more, you must educate new clients. And new clients, it's clients type of persons from 19th. Do you know about the process of privatization in Ukraine, in Russia, you know, yeah? So it's... Uh, uh, I, I tell to, to, to somebody uh, who don't care about this. Um, so in 19th, after um, uh, after Soviet Union, uh, in our country, rich persons can uh, bought uh, uh, some uh, some plants, uh, some infrastructure in Ukraine for for one million, for ten million. So really very cheap. And from this period. 
it starts process of uh, new Ukrainian businessman development and of oligarchs group development. And uh, that's why they have um, biggest, they have biggest uh, companies in Ukraine. So for example, if you want to work in Ukraine with big clients, uh, it's not Coca-Cola. Big client, it's Met Invest of oligarch Ahmetov because it's big holding for mining and uh, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, or, um, you must work with smart holding of Mr. Novinsky. Uh, or you must uh, work with uh, Ukraine International Airlines. Uh, so, and that's why you must understand uh, type of thinking of main investors and uh, type of thinking of uh, their uh, CEOs, so their marketing um, uh, SMO and so on and so forth. Uh, and um, as you see, for example, uh, head of marketing, they must uh, solve not only problems and tasks of company, for example, of mining company, they also must solve problem of main investor. Because every Ukrainian citizen said that Oh, Akhmetov is oligarch, he is bad, and that's why we must, uh, for example, uh, do nationalization of uh, his, uh, his uh, some infrastructure, and so on and so forth. So, and, and it's also second uh, problem in companies, uh, that one person can work as PR manager, GR manager, um, anti-crisis manager uh, and um, you know some person of investor mm, and uh, it's also I think uniqueness of Ukrainian, Moldovian, uh, maybe Belarusian market because I haven't experienced but um, sometimes uh, in Bulgarian markets and, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, when you form uh, your proposal for such type of clients, you must also understand that it's not only about uh, product, uh, it's not only about um, uh, some PR work with local community, it's also about big holding and it's also always about investor uh, in Ukraine. Um, so uh, our clients in classical PR, they like, uh, you know, complex proposals. So it can be basic proposal and, for example, if some, something happens, anti-crisis proposal. Mm -hmm. And anti-crisis proposal, it's really good money if, if you talk about money. Uh, okay, so it's some points of uniqueness. Um, and, uh, ah, and uh, media, media in Ukraine. Uh, media in Ukraine, it's also task and problems because mostly media uh, owned by oligarchs. <laughs> and, um, uh, that's why oligarchs invest to their um, infrastructure, to um, uh, their companies, and these companies invest to political forces, and uh, these companies invest to biggest media. And uh, that's why media not earning money. So every Ukrainian media, if you talk about TV, about uh, big holdings, uh, it's not for profit, it's for influence. Mm. So uh, because, for example, if Mr. Kolomoisky is one of our oligarchs, he has almost monopoly in banking system, a private uh, bank, so he, he had this monopoly and um, after some situation he take main, main actives and uh, uh, and uh, uh, ah? and yeah, yeah, and, uh, uh, he uh, he has also influence to Ukraine International Airlines. Uh, he uh, has also gas and oil company, uh, and he has one of the biggest media holding. It's one plus one holding, uh, and um, it's complex of uh, internet newspapers, newspapers, informational agencies. Uh, TV channels uh, and uh, one plus one it's a uh, channel with very good rating but it's not for profit uh, so if he have profit for example from Tensornet it's a uh, internet website with good rating uh, you can check uh, if you will work in Ukraine you can go to Big Mirnet and they have rating of internet media it's quite good uh, but he can't take profit from TV 
but if he, um, for example, will sell uh, this holding, he haven't influenced voters. But he must uh, do every time this influence because uh, if uh, he will have conflict with president, for example, and uh, last period he had this conflict with yes. president, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> as usual, um, he, um, for example, can use this TV channel for some critical critical messages. Um, Mr. Akhmetov has the same situation. So, um, the media holding Ukraine, <coughs> so it's uh, yeah, it's very good in writing. It's most popular in Ukraine, but for mass market, uh, for old people and so on and so forth. Uh, so, media holding Ukraine, it's uh, owned by Akhmetov and Akhmetov's family. Total. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, price of advertising is very high. Uh, so you can pay, for example, uh, on uh, one campaign uh, in um, in marketing, yeah, in uh, commercial, it can be um, thirty hundred thousand. So, and if it's uh, a political campaign, it's not less than one uh, half of million dollars. Um, so it's like in the US, so it's really very expensive uh, because uh, media don't want want to earn money. And Irina will te uh, tell you about also projects of social responsibility, about NGO management, and because of uh, this type of management of TV channels, they don't want to do some also interesting projects. Sometimes, sometimes they won't, but sometimes. It's problem. Uh, so oligarchs' influence it's uh, it's problem for Ukraine, for Bulgaria, for Moldova, uh, of course, for Belarus. Uh, in Russia, they have uh, other other problem. I think that if you will interest, in, uh, I will inform you. So and about data numbers, you can check in the presentation. Um, Okay, ah, and it's also data about uh, main companies who um, buy advertising on TV and uh, on the uh, internet. So as you see, uh, mostly um, mostly it's uh, FMCG uh, companies mm -hmm. and retail companies. If we talk not about uh, political management, so when we talk uh, um, yeah, about marketing. And uh, I must add that um, FMCG sector with multinationals and uh, some Ukrainian companies and retail, it's uh, also very rich clients because retail um, don't pay all taxes. That's why they have uh, very big money for PR, for advertising uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, they, they exactly use uh, most progressive technology, so they use for five years big data analysis in um, in shops and also in uh, um, internet behavior and so on and so forth. So they, as clients, very progressive, and uh, they can take contracts, for example, with multinational companies, and uh, they have uh, quite independent um, marketing directors. But the next problem of work in commercial sector and in uh, sector of uh, political uh, in, uh, uh, and it's also um, last year data about uh, money in, um, in Ukraine. Uh, bribery. Uh, bribery <laughs> is uh, a very big problem for our market because um, in, in Europe it also exists, yeah, like uh, uh, commission, 10% mm -hmm. to you, 10% to me, so it's, it's, but in Ukraine it can be 30%, for example, in cash. Uh, and uh, it's a very big problem for democracy development in Ukraine because every government tender it's uh, uh, till, yeah, till 30% from all contract to some person. And that's why we have very huge corruption and very huge um, corruption perception in Ukraine. 
but in commercial companies it's the same people with the same index of corruption perception and when you came for example and said that, oh I'm a very progressive international company I work with nano marketing I work with big data I work with very cheap communication uh, with customer they said cool give to us uh, uh, your presentation give you to, to us some um, your proposal and then uh, winner of this tender will be Petya company or the Masha company because Masha company give a bribe to uh, head of tender committee and uh, you must understand that it's also quite as usual in the Ukrainian market um, sometimes, if you are very popular in media, if you um, are very popular in um, some client's market, uh, they can came to your company, like to our company, and they get, oh, you are very cool, so we, our investor said that we must work with you. Uh, so, and that, in, in this way, we um, mustn't pay this, uh, this, yeah. this bribe. Uh, but it's also a big problem for quality. Because if you have bribe, for example, 30%, it, and you must take your income to company, and you must pay taxes also, uh, bought money for, for work, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? And you understand prices of uh, TV work, of classical advertising, and so on and so forth. And that's why quality sometimes very low. Or sometimes uh, PR uh, companies, for example, do... Um, uh, they don't uh, do deep research, but they do, for example, big media buying because they also have bribe from <laughs> media companies. <laughs> and that's why, for example, big uh, um, um, advertising company give not target uh, ad in the internet, but ad for all. Uh, it's classical scene. For example, for budget half a million, but it's work only for your target audience. For example, for 100,000. Um, and um, that's why bribery, at, and I moderate very interesting discussion on Kiev Economical Forum about c corruption perception and about bribery in Ukraine, so it were bad practices and that's why um, mostly of international companies uh, have contracts on, on, only with multinationals because they have contract with headquarters. Uh, for example, a kill with yes, so they they got work uh, here uh, because they have contracts uh, in headquarters. Um, can I add something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you are quite transparent about the problems and certain issues yeah. you face uh, within your work. Mm -hmm. But do you find difficulties uh, with being so honest uh, about these issues when you're doing your job day to day, or is it very common that you're discussing these topics with your colleagues and people in the industry? Uh, you know, for, 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 for my clients, uh, it's good because that's why it's yeah. the clients of our company. But for uh, everyone in this market mm -hmm. understands these problems. And everyone in this market will uh, take more income if uh, we do this market more transparent. Yeah. Uh, but not everyone have time, resources, uh, um, some team to do this educational work uh, or to do, for example, educational work for new professionals. Um, so they have one, two, three contracts and so on and so forth. And uh, I think that it's also important for main investor because main investor want to uh, do results. And main investor has huge problem from problem, for example, with um, general attorney mm -hmm. uh, to problems uh, with, uh, I don't know, customs, yeah, for example, yeah. if it's uh, FMCG. Uh, and um, that's why I think that it's our strategy. Strategy of some, uh, for example, where also good professionals, uh, they don't do any lectures, they don't do any broad uh, any TV shows, and because I also take part in TV shows and yeah. so on and so forth, I think that it's, it's the best strategy. Uh, also strategy of defense, you know. Uh, but uh, they said, okay, I have five clients, it's very good, five clients, 
and I live not actually in Ukraine but in France, uh, yeah. in Monaco, and uh, yeah. that. I, but I have office here with, uh, for example, twenty good uh, good professionals, and that's why I don't wanna to invest to this market to do educational work because I have five good clients, and it's also position, and I respect this position also because they also professionals. But they work in, in, in this style. You know, I, I can work, for example, also for Ukrainian clients in the uh, US. So it's also very good money, and uh, I will explain you this uh, situation. Uh, but it's interesting to create, you know, new, new practices and new markets in Ukraine. You can't create in uh, Belgium, for example, mm -hmm. industry of jar, because it exists. You can't create anything really in the US uh, because it's more than a million to invest, in, I think that five million minimum. And here you can create new industries. And it's uh, it's wild market, but it's also interesting market. Yeah. It's on, on my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about Ukrainian oligarchs and about private bank, uh, how it works, and, uh, and about reputation management. It's also one more type of clients. It's uh, monitoring and reputation management, anti-crisis management. Uh, because um, for sure, when you um, quite rich person, you have many enemies. And uh, um, one more problem in Ukrainian markets is that you can really buy almost everything. So you uh, want to, for example, pay for article in newspaper without ads, uh, uh, so uh, editorial uh, um, article, and uh, for example, it can be 1,000 euro. It's, it's okay, uh, internet, uh, I think. But if, you, if uh, media said, oh no, we don't want to tell about this story, you can do some softer variants and pay five times more, and they take this article. Uh, so, and that's why it's a problem because when some, uh, not every media, not every media, but mostly, no, really mostly, uh, and uh, um, when, uh, and I will explain to you also that PR work, you know, like classical PR work in Europe, and you work, but not do earn media and so on and so forth, it's also not understandable for clients, I, I will expect. But if you have crisis and if you have enemy, this enemy give man, more money to market and uh, they do TV shows about you, they work with opinion leaders and so on and so forth and also courts doesn't work, for, for example, in the cases of reputation. Uh, it's also a problem of uh, reform uh, in uh, justice, so on and so forth, but it doesn't work today. And uh, um, I also have experience of working with European media um, in different variants, but they don't take uh, um, position with uh, very hard critical. So they can take position, as you know, expert number one said that it's his opinion that uh, Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I think is interesting about your story is that you said, first of all, that a lot of the publishing houses are in control of the oligarchs. Yeah. But uh, they don't take too much advertising, but it's possible to buy an article. Yeah. Okay. It, they, they take advertising, but yeah. they don't earn money because it's not enough. Uh, it's, it's not enough for, for income because it's very big holdings. There's no big business model or like a Yeah, 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 like yeah. So they take money, quite big money. For example, about news, if you want to buy for contract news, it can be from $50 to $500. No, depends on ratings. Uh, if you, it's uh, commercial, it's cheaper. It's uh, anti-crisis or some lobbying commercial and so on and so forth. And uh, article, it's from uh, 900, I think, till 5,000. And then you are in a nationwide yeah, uh, yeah. newspaper. Yeah, and in a nationwide, obviously. Yeah, of course, with it's the 1 million plus readers. Um, maybe something 
if you take, for example, on one popular newspaper, it can be five millions for three, four thousand euros. Okay. And it wow. will be a very good target, target audience. But you also must have good data analysis to check it, because sometimes uh, they also show you one statistic and other. One more question about it is, uh, are also newspapers sometimes uh, not willing to cooperate because the messaging that you want to bring across is against the will yeah. of the oligarch yeah 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 it's 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 classical problem because uh, if uh, it's not in policy of this media holding that they can't work for mm. any money so it's for example pro-russian because the oligarch is pro-russian and you have more of an anti-russian sentiment then that yeah, yeah. they would decline but 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 classical it's uh, for example if uh, oligarch a have business in sphere where oligarch b also have uh, media holding of oligarch A um, for any money don't publish yeah. information good good <laughs> information about oligarch B. So yeah, it's it or about political force that oligarch B invest. Uh, so it's also but we understand it at start and that's why we don't communicate with media holdings. With but if you work with, for example, structure uh, who oligarchs B support. All media of this oligarch will be for for free. It's also <laughs> yeah. okay. It's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a different strategy than uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, well, sure. do you also um, have to have a few newspapers or outlets or uh, people who protest against this system of working, or more trying to be more independent? Or yeah, yeah. Very we, we, we have, we have, uh, we have such type of uh, newspapers, but it's newspapers for smart people um, and it's, uh, very narrow uh, audience, very narrow. Uh, so we have newspapers with high, um, high, high support yeah. of uh, civil society, uh, but it's not so... But do they experience uh, freedom to do their work or is it difficult for them? Um, you can work, for example, with some editorial teams, or you can work uh, with uh, classical PR message. But you know, it's it's narrow audience. Yeah. So if you wanna to work nationwide, it's not about this type of uh, editorial teams. And also sometimes these editorial teams support from European Union, from European Commission, mm -hmm. from some grants, and that's why they earn good salary. Uh, for example, um, it can be 2,000 euros, so for Ukraine it's very good salary. Uh, but uh, editorial team takes this money from some European institution. And that's why they don't want to take money from company to publish some form information and so on and so forth. Yeah. But if you work in classical lobbying and in transparency lobbying, they can, for example, do some media projects for free. If they also interested in your analytics and so on and so forth, I will explain you that uh, um, our market is also also in sometimes good market and transparent market, yeah. so it's also can be. Uh, so and about oligarchs and about big businessmen. They mostly interested in anti crisis monitoring, in anti crisis packages, uh, and also in working abroad. So, in PR in the European Union, in uh, lobbying in the European Union, in PR in the US, because uh, somebody of them have big business also in the US. For example, Mr. Minsky has business in um, mining in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, that's why he also needs uh, to work from holding. That time. And uh, also some government structures like Ukraboron Prom, it's built a big uh, defense um, defense uh, holding. Um, they also interested in work in foreign markets. Uh, and it's good legal contracts uh, and uh, uh, you know it's um, some quite transparent market. Because if you work with conferences in Brussels, if you work with opinion leaders in Europe, if you work with media in Europe, they uh, they signed contracts or no? Because it's we, we haven't market of these uh, proposals. Uh, so if, for example, I'm monopolist for working in the US, 
uh, that's why they don't say that oh pay bribe for, for work so it's unique uh, unique proposal and you work on all and if some somebody wanna to take bribe they also came to me and I do this type of work and lobbying 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 it's also very very good uh, contracts uh, uh, because uh, it's also un unique and new proposal of our market and Bulgarian market and Moldova market and sometimes this type of clients also have problems with Interpol uh, for example uh, some, uh, yeah quite often yeah. Uh, and, um, for example you have red cards of Interpol it's uh, when you can't uh, go anywhere and uh, sometimes you have yellow cards of Interpol so you can go but you are under monitoring and many of Ukrainian politicians and uh, businessmen have this yellow card and uh, that's why you must work with European lawyers to uh, to do also positive image of uh, this type of person. Um, okay. Um, ah, rating, yeah, rating. It's also a problem. It's uh, you know this this. So it's when crimes came uh, to your, for example, agri um, agri. Uh, like business masks with, mm -hmm. with weapons <laughs> came to to your business and said uh, also quite usual uh, situation about big factories and businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very often. So and uh, these weapons uh, men uh, came uh, to your business and said that from tomorrow it's our business and they also have some. Uh, <laughs> uh, some <laughs> Uh, it, it's very huge and very uh, often problem in Ukraine uh, with agri uh, infrastructure. It's classical, and also the lawyers of uh, these groups, criminal groups, uh, they do documents and said that sign this document that we are main uh, beneficiaries of uh, this. Uh, plant or yeah. agri complex and so on and so forth. Well, they came, for example, and harvesting all and say goodbye. <laughs> it's our harvest. It's, it's our problem. And um, sometimes they work with uh, with power, with local power, with attorneys and so on and so forth. And in this way you also need uh, uh, to work in anti-crisis way to show the situation, to show the situation to society and um, and to protect this type of business and uh, that's why anti-crisis and raiding you can see statistics uh, from one NGO about uh, these cases all over Ukraine so as you see it's really quite what quite, quite uh, Odessa is the biggest uh, Odessa, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Because in Odessa they have uh, also customs, and customs is black money. Yeah. So in Odessa it's uh, cr criminals groups in Odessa very uh, influential. It's a big point, yeah. yeah. We will meet him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and about lobbying, uh, so uh, lobbying markets uh, and uh, PR work uh, in lobbying cases, it's uh, only developing. Uh, but uh, some associations, NGO companies in Ukraine um, now wanna to sometimes wanna to work in transparency way. Why? Because it's cheaper. Uh, because, for example, if uh, other sites invest to corruption one million, uh, you can invest um, thirty hundred, and it will be okay and uh, to communication and to analyze this and to uh, lawyers work and so on and so forth. So they understand that it's cheaper and that's why uh, they also work in legal um, in legal contracts, in lobbying contracts and so on and so forth. But it's, uh, and uh, we also work in some cases for development of uh, associations, of development of some, uh, some societies, uh, uh, for industries. Uh, and it's new markets, but it's also quite interesting because mostly uh, they want to work uh, uh, in Eastern Partnership countries, for example, in agri questions uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah. Do you know if there was any lobbying in the Netherlands regarding the EU membership? 
uh, two uh, years ago. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about referendum. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's uh, I think more evidence of bad uh, lobbying work of Ukraine in the European Union because we have if 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 we uh, open register transparency register in United uh, in uh, Yale and also uh, far register uh, it's uh, on uh, foreign agents uh, um, register you also see that in US it's five contracts <coughs> for all uh, period of its 27 years of independence only five contracts in the US and uh, not more than 15 in, in Europe because it's not so strictly and uh, part of uh, this contract it's uh, uh, women's lobbying you know so it's about NGO work um, uh, movement for reforms so not not about business um, that's why I think that uh, our failure in Netherlands it's uh, because of uh, ignore uh, in government sector needness of legal lobbying and in every TV show I said that I as taxpayer wanna to pay for for this for lobbying of Ukraine in Yale because Russia pay for because it's really very big money in legal wear and very big money it's in not legal way for example second salary for members in the European Parliament FMCG sector with multinationals and uh, some Ukrainian companies and retail it's uh, also very rich clients because retail um, don't pay all taxes that's why they have uh, very big money for PR for advertising uh, and so on and so forth and uh, they they exactly use uh, most progressive technology, so they use for five years big data analysis in um, in shops and also in uh, um, internet behavior and so on and so forth. So they, as clients, very progressive, and uh, they can take contracts, for example, with multinational companies, and uh, they have uh, quite independent um, marketing directors. But the next problem of work in commercial sector and in uh, sector of uh, political uh, and it's also um, last year data about uh, money in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, bribery. Uh, bribery <laughs> is uh, a very big problem for our market because um, in, in Europe it also exists, yeah, like uh, uh, commission, 10% to you, 10% to me, so it's, it's, but in Ukraine it can be 30%, for example, in Russia. Uh, and uh, it's a very big problem for democracy development in Ukraine because every government tender it's uh, uh, till, yeah, till 30% from all contract to some person. And that's why we have very huge corruption and very huge um, corruption perception in Ukraine. But in commercial companies, it's the same people with the same index of corruption perception. And when you came, for example, and said, that, oh, I'm a very progressive international company, I work with nano marketing, I work with big data, I work with very cheap communication uh, with customers, they said, cool, give to us uh, uh, your presentation, give you to, to us some um, your proposal, and then uh, winner of this tender will be Peter Company or well, um, Masha Company. Because Masha Company give a bribe to uh, head of tender committee. And uh, you must understand that it's also quite as usual in the Ukrainian market. Um, sometimes, if you are very popular in media, if you um, are very popular in um, some client's market, uh, they can came to your company, like to our company, and they get, oh, you are very cool, so we, our investor said that we must work with you. Uh, so, and that, in, in this way, we um, mustn't pay this, uh, this, yeah. this bribe. Uh, but it's also a big problem for quality. Because if you have bribe, for example, 30%, it, and you must take your income to company, and you must pay taxes also, uh, what money for, 
for work, <laughs> yeah? And you understand prices of uh, TV work, of classical advertising, and so on and so forth. And that's why quality sometimes very low. Or sometimes uh, PR uh, companies, for example, do... Um, uh, they don't uh, do deep research, but they do, for example, big media buying because they also have bribe from <laughs> media companies. <laughs> and that's why, for example, big uh, um, um, advertising company give not target uh, ad in internet, but ad for all. Uh, it's classical scene. For example, for budget half a million, but it's work only for your target audience. For example, for 100,000. Um, and um, that's why bribery, at, and I moderate very interesting discussion on Kiev Economical Forum about c corruption perception and about bribery in Ukraine, so it's very bad practices, and that's why um, mostly of international companies uh, have contracts on, on, only with multinationals, because they have contract with headquarters. Uh, for example, a kill with yes, so they they got work uh, here uh, because they have contracts uh, in headquarters. Uh, can I add something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you are quite transparent about the problems and certain issues yeah. you face uh, within your work. Mm -hmm. But do you find difficulties uh, with being so honest uh, about these issues when you're doing your job day to day, or is it very common that you're discussing these topics with your colleagues and people in the industry? Uh, you know, for, 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 for my clients, uh, it's good because that's why it's yeah. the clients of our company. But for uh, everyone in this market mm -hmm. understands these problems. And everyone in this market will uh, take more income if uh, we do this market more transparent. Yeah. Uh, but not everyone have time, resources, uh, um, some team to do this educational work uh, or to do, for example, educational work for new professionals. Um, so they have one, two, three contracts and so on and so forth. And uh, I think that it's also important for main investor because main investor want to uh, do results. And main investor has huge problem from problem, for example, with um, general attorney mm -hmm. uh, to problems uh, with, uh, I don't know, customs, yeah, for example, yeah. if it's uh, FMCG. Uh, and um, that's why I think that it's our strategy. Strategy of some, uh, for example, where also good professionals, uh, they don't do any lectures, they don't do any broad uh, any TV shows, and because I also taken part in TV shows and yeah. so on and so forth, I think that it's, it's the best strategy. Uh, also strategy of defense, you know. Uh, but uh, they said, okay, I have five clients, it's very good, five clients. And I live not actually in Ukraine, but in France, uh, yeah. in Monaco. And uh, yeah. that I've, but I have office here with, uh, for example, 20 good, uh, good professionals. And that's why I don't want to invest to this market, to do educational work, because I have five good clients. And it's also position. And I respect this position also because they also professionals. But they work in, in, in this style. You know, I, I can work, for example, also for Ukrainian clients in the uh, US. So it's also very good money, and uh, I will explain you this uh, situation. Uh, but it's interesting to create, you know, new, new practices and new markets in Ukraine. You can't create in uh, Belgium, for example, mm -hmm. industry of jar, because it exists. You can't create anything really in the US uh, because it's more than a million to invest, in, I think that five million minimum. And here you can create new industries. And it's uh, it's wild market, but it's also interesting market. Yeah. It's on, on my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about Ukrainian oligarchs and about private bank, uh, how it works, and, uh, and about reputation uh, management. It's also one more type of clients. It's uh, monitoring and reputation management, anti-crisis management. Um, because um, for sure, when you um, quite rich person, you have many enemies. 
And uh, um, one more problem in Ukrainian markets is that you can really buy almost everything. So you uh, want to, for example, pay for article in newspaper without ads, uh, so uh, editorial uh, article, and uh, for example, it can be 1,000 euro. It's, it's okay. Uh, internet, uh, but if you, if uh, media said, oh no, we don't want to tell about this story, you can do some softer variant and pay five times more, and they take this article. Uh, so, and that's why it's a problem because when some, uh, not every media, not every media, but mostly, no, really mostly, uh, and uh, when uh, and I. Will explain to you also that PR work, you know, like classical PR work in Europe, and you work but not do urban media and so on and so forth. It's also not understandable for clients. I, I will explain. But if you have crisis and if you have enemy, this enemy give man, more money to market, and uh, they do TV shows about you. They work with opinion leaders and so on and so forth. And also, courts doesn't work, for example, for example, in the cases of reputation. Uh, it's also a problem of reform uh, in uh, justice, so on and so forth, but it doesn't work today. And sure, sure. Uh, um, I also have experience of working with European media um, in different variants, but they don't take uh, um, position with uh, very hard critical. So they can take position, as you know, expert number one said that it's his opinion that. Um, but, um, sorry. Yeah. May, um, yeah. What I think is interesting about your story is that you said, first of all, that a lot of the publishing houses are in control of the oligarchs. Yeah. But uh, they don't take too much advertising, but it's possible to buy an article. Yeah. Okay. It, they, they take advertising. Yeah. But they don't earn money because it's not enough. Uh, it's it's not enough for for income because it's very big holdings. There's no big business model or like. A, yeah, 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 like yeah. So they take money quite big. For example, about news, if you wanna to buy for contract news, it can be from fifty dollars to five hundred dollars. No, depends on recent. Uh, if you, it's uh, commercial, it's cheaper. It's uh, anti-crisis or some lobbying commercial and so on and so forth. And uh, article, it's from uh, 900, I think, till 5,000. And then you are in a nationwide yeah, uh, yeah. newspaper. Yeah, and in a nationwide, obviously. Yeah, with the 1 million plus readers. Um, maybe something... If you take, for example, on one popular newspaper, it can, can be five millions for three, four thousand euros. Okay. And wow. it will be very good target target audience. But you also must have good data analysis to check it because sometimes uh, they also show you one statistic and. What, what, one more question about it is, uh, are also newspapers sometimes uh, not willing to cooperate because the messaging that you want to br bring across is against the will yeah. of the oligarch? Yeah, 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 it's a it's, it's classical problem because uh, if uh, it's not in policy of this media holding that they can't work for yeah. any money. So it's for example pro-Russian because the oligarch is pro-Russian and you have more of an anti-Russian sentiment then that yeah, yeah. they would decline. But, but, but Classical, it's uh, for example, if uh, oligarch A have business in sphere where oligarch B also have uh, media holding of oligarch A um, for any money, don't publish yeah. information good, good <laughs> information about oligarch B. So yeah, it's it or about political force that oligarch B invest. Uh, so it's also, but we understand it at start, and that's why we don't communicate with media holdings with. But if you work with, for example, structure uh, who oligarchs be support, all media of this oligarch will be for, for free. It's also... <laughs> okay, it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a different strategy than... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, oh, sorry. 
Yes. Well, do you also um, have to have a few newspapers or outlets or uh, people who protest against this system of working or more trying to be more independent? Or yeah, yeah, we, we, we have, we have, uh, we have such type of uh, newspapers, but it's newspapers for smart people um, <laughs> and it's, uh, very narrow uh, audience, very narrow. Uh, so we have newspapers with high. Um, High support yeah. of uh, civil society, uh, but it's not so. But do they experience uh, freedom to do their work, or is it difficult for them? Uh, you can work, for example, with some editorial teams, or you can work uh, with uh, classical PR message. But you know, it's it's narrow audience. Yeah. So if you wanna to work nationwide, it's not about this type of uh, editorial teams. And also sometimes these editorial teams support from European Union, from European Commission, mm -hmm. from some grants, and that's why they earn good salary. Uh, for example, um, it can be 2,000 euros, so for Ukraine it's very good salary. Uh, but uh, editorial team takes this money from some European institution. And that's why they don't want to take money from company to publish some form, information, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But if you work in classical lobbying and in transparency lobbying, they can, for example, do some media projects for free. If they also interested in your analytics and so on and so forth, I will explain you that uh, um, our market is also also in sometimes good market and transparent market, yeah. so it also can be. Uh, so, and about oligarchs and about big businessmen, they mostly interested in anti-crisis monitoring, in anti-crisis packages, uh, and also in the working abroad. So, in PR in the European Union, in uh, lobbying in the European Union, in PR in the US, because uh, somebody of them have big business also in the US. For example, Mr. Mwinski have business in um, mining in Pennsylvania. Uh, so that's why he also needs uh, to work from holding in that side. And uh, also some government structures like Ukraboron Prom, it's built a big uh, defense, um, defense uh, holding. Um, they also interested in work in foreign markets. Uh, and it's good legal contracts uh, and uh, uh, you know it's um, some quite transparent market. Because if you work with conferences in Brussels, if you work with opinion leaders in Europe, if you work with media in Europe, they uh, they signed contracts or no? Because it's we, we haven't market of these uh, proposals. Uh, so if, for example, I'm monopolist for working in the US, uh, that's why they don't say that, oh, pay bribe for, for work. So it's unique uh, unique proposal and you work or no? And if some somebody wanna to take bribe, they also came to me, and I do this type of work. And lobbying, lobbying, lobbying. It's also very, very good uh, contracts uh, because uh, it's also un unique and new proposal of our market and Bulgarian market and Moldova market. And sometimes this type of clients also have problems with Interpol. Uh, for example, uh, <laughs> some, uh, yeah, quite often. Yeah. Uh, and um, for example, you have red card of Interpol. It's uh, when you can't uh, go anywhere. And uh, sometimes you have yellow card of Interpol, so you can go, but you are under monitoring. And many of Ukrainian politicians and uh, businessmen have this yellow card, and uh, that's why you must work with European lawyers to. Uh, to do also positive image of uh, this type of person. Um, okay. Um, ah, rating, yeah, rating. It's also a problem. It's uh, you know this this. So it's when crimes came uh, to your, for example, agri um, agri. Uh, I business masks with, mm -hmm. with weapons <laughs> came to to your business and said uh, also quite usual uh, situation about big factories and businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very often. So and uh, these weapons uh, men uh, came uh, to your business and said that from tomorrow it's our business. And they also have some uh, <laughs> uh, some 
Most of them are very. It's it's very huge and very uh, often problem in Ukraine uh, with agri uh, infrastructure. It's classical and also in lawyers of uh, these groups, criminal groups. Uh, they do documents and said that sign these documents that we are main uh, beneficiaries of uh, this uh, um, plant or yeah. agri complex and so on and so forth. Well, they came, for example, and harvesting all and say goodbye. <laughs> it's our harvest. It's, it's our problem. <laughs> and um, sometimes they work with. Uh, with power, with local power, with attorneys, and so on and so forth. And in this way, you also need uh, uh, to work in anti-crisis way to show the situation, to show the situation to society, and um, and to protect this type of business. And uh, that's why anti-crisis and trading, you can see statistics uh, from one NGO about uh, these cases all over Ukraine. So as you see, it's really quite, quite, quite. quite. Uh, Odessa is the biggest. Uh, Odessa, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because in Odessa they have uh, also customs, and customs it's black money, yeah. so in Odessa it's uh, cr criminals groups in Odessa are very um, influential. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will meet him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and about lobbying, uh, so uh, lobbying markets uh, and uh, PR work uh, in lobbying cases, it's uh, only developing. Uh, but uh, some associations, NGO companies in Ukraine um, now want to sometimes wanted to work in transparency way. Why? Because it's cheaper. Uh, because, for example, if uh, other sites invest to corruption one million, uh, you can invest um, 30 hundred uh, and it will be okay and uh, to communication and to analysis and to uh, lawyers work and so on and so forth. So they understand that it's cheaper and that's why uh, they also work in legal um, in legal contracts, in lobbying contracts, and so on and so forth. But it's uh, and uh, we also work in some cases for development of uh, associations, of development of some uh, some societies uh, uh, for industries. Uh, and it's new markets, but it's also quite interesting because. Mostly uh, they want to work uh, uh, in Eastern Partnership countries, for example, in agri questions uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah. Do you know if there was any lobbying in the Netherlands regarding the AU membership uh, uh, three years ago? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about referendum. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's uh, I think more evidence of bad uh, lobbying work of Ukraine in the European Union. Because we have, if, if, if we uh, open regist transparency register in United uh, in uh, Yale and also uh, far register, uh, it's uh, on uh, foreign agents uh, um, register. You also see that in US it's five contracts <coughs> for all uh, period of its 27 years of independence. Only five contracts in US. And uh, not more than 15 in, in Europe, because it's not so strictly. And uh, part of uh, this contract is uh, women's lobbying, you know, so it's about NGO work, um, uh, movement for reforms, so not, not about business. Um, that's why I think that uh, our failure in Netherlands is because of uh, ignore uh, in government sector, needness of legal lobbying. And in every TV show, I said that I, as taxpayer, wanted to pay for, for this, for lobbying of Ukraine in Yale, because Russia paid for, for because it's really very big money in legal wear and very big money is in not legal way, for example, second salary for members in the European Parliament. Um, so it's a very interesting question. Who is the trader on the slide? Uh, <coughs> it's uh, Manafort. Uh, Manafort, who uh, he works as, as consultant for Yanukovych yeah. team. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, and about public relations tools. Uh, so, I don't want to stop on classical thing because you understand uh, this, but uh, I can stop about um, working with opinion leaders. It's really a good tool in Ukraine when you work with opinion leaders, also in commercial PR. Um, so, for example, uh, when we work with uh, babies' uh, products, uh, the most effective thing was uh, working with doctors and working with uh, opinion leaders and leaders in TV shows. Uh, so it uh, was the most uh, effective. And also the same situation we have with Jews uh, when we must work with category uh, to um, to do more um, market value for for Jews because Ukrainians don't like to drinking juice because it's quite uh, uh, it's quite expensive and uh, uh, they don't understand that it's uh, uh, good uh, part of vitamins uh, in yeah. shadow and so on and so forth. And, and so, sorry, the yeah. baby, because uh, we, we, we just uh, got a briefing from a client also. Yeah. So we have baby bloggers and baby Instagrammers and yeah, 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 yeah. And do you have like baby, baby media in the... It, 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 it of course works and you also must work with, you know, doctors uh, who leaders in TV shows. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, and with association of doctors and so on and so forth, maybe create your own association, it can be. <laughs> um, also mother's clubs, so it's, it's classical. Um, I also see some uh, documents from other uh, companies last year uh, from uh, post-Soviet Union territory. So, um, and um, you know, people hope that these opinion leaders on their side, because they know about uh, oligarchs media, because they know about uh, newspapers, and they said that, uh, yeah, I hope that my friends, that people uh, in TV who are professionals, like archetype of professionals in their, um, uh, in their work, they, I, um, I can work with them and I can trust them mostly. And it's more than half uh, trust, it's half, uh, it's trust to opinion leaders. And the same in political management. Uh, if you have uh, one point of budget, it's better to use this budget for opinion leaders. And it will be more cheaper than uh, give to two points, for example, for TV advertising. So better it's uh, take uh, big packages of opinion leaders' office. Um, and it's also quite good con contract, so it's not very expensive in Ukraine when you sign for example, for one year contract. But in political management, it can be one year contract, so it uh, will be uh, one month or three months contract. And it's also it's also um, a very big issue for companies because you can't uh, plan in, for example, salaries and so on and so forth when you have contracts, good contract, but for one month. You know, in one month it can be five crises and it's work at night and so on and so forth, and other months it uh, can be, for example, vacation, and on, on vacation uh, everybody drinks uh, in Monaco, and <coughs> that's why you have clients, not like in European practices, when you have uh, for a year um, this contract. So, uh, so, yeah. so, so people watch a lot of TV in uh, Ukraine? Yeah, 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 for sure. So uh, digital media, it's uh, not so powerful yeah, like in US or like in Europe. Why? Because uh, firstly, all these gadgets uh, is quite expensive for, for, for Ukrainian person. Uh, so now, now internetization is uh, mm, quite high and we also have very cheap internet. So if, for example, in uh, Europe, I think that it's, it's uh, $25 minimum year yeah, for, for months for internet uh, at home. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ukraine it can be 2 free euro, euros. Okay. For, oh, wow. So it's, it's, okay, it's, it's, it's also, uh, it's not about the quality. quality. It's the quality yeah. of coverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not about quality, but it's about uh, um, uh, you're connected to, to, yeah. to media. Uh, and that's why, for example, you can't collect uh, so massive data because these people haven't very big uh, number of digital footprints. 
because for example they use only uh, free websites uh, websites about babies websites about uh, Tamodessa info and websites about football and uh, also pirate uh, uh, movies uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, mostly of people who have connections also uh, use uh, uh, more interesting websites uh, and uh, I also take uh, data from providers and uh, sometimes it's 90% you know so it's not about information sites and not about statics and Coursera it's about other things, uh, but, uh, but it's a problem for, for us as professionals because we uh, can't do targeting, uh, um, uh, can't do targeting. But when you work in Kiev, Odessa, Lviv, it's uh, more than one uh, million uh, citizens, uh, it's good. So you can do a big data analysis and people more rich, that's why they buy iPads, iPhones, uh, smartphones, they use different apps uh, and you can buy uh, in Ukraine two comp in Ukraine two companies who do big data analysis uh, quite good not like in US not like signal labs you know so but it's it's quite good I can show you um, after Irina's speech uh, some some examples um, of deep research of big data in Ukraine uh, and it's not uh, so it's from 1,000 euros still, 10,000 euros for analysis, uh, and in Europe and in the US uh, it's from um, 20,000 as, as I know. Uh, and uh, when, when you take this data, communication in big cities is very cheap, very cheap. Um, so um, that's why it's about digital media and of course if you work with opinion leaders and with some form influence, of course it's internet, of course it's, uh, mm, it's uh, landing from, um, from fake opinion leaders, you know, yeah, um, so hidden marketing. Um, and uh, also it's uh, fake news like international trends it's also a problem for Ukraine because as you know we have war conflict and uh, that's why fake news and Russian influence in the internet it's, uh, it's quite huge and if you haven't a good big data tool uh, it's uh, quite hard to fight with, uh, with this situation Okay, about uh, TV and yeah. Well, do you also have social media? Do you also use social media as a tool? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. So, um, uh, mostly in Ukraine we have uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, like all over the world. And uh, um, to, to last year we also used Contact, it's Russian social, social uh, network, but uh, now uh, it's blocked by Verkhovna Rada, by uh, our parliament. Uh, like Russian propaganda, and uh, that's why now people can use contact, but with anonymizer, you know, so it's it's some problem. Um, that's why uh, people go to Facebook, and uh, Facebook really good tool when you work with opinion leaders and when you work with active part of society, because Facebook in Ukraine it's uh, um, about um, active part of society. Uh, if we are uh, talking about people who use Facebook one and more times a day. Um, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, it's a very, uh, very low part of market. That's why we use Twitter, LinkedIn only um, in enterprises and lobbying companies when you must influence to international offices here in Ukraine, to politicians, to um, also people uh, in editorial teams and so on and so forth but it's a bit very very low um, audience uh, and uh, it's also very good to use uh, advertising in the internet because uh, more than 30 percent of people use internet like uh, a resource of information uh, so that's why if you take banners uh, or if you take some articles on this website with uh, on on the main page, it will be good. Uh, and uh, we also sometimes do some reports or do some uh, big articles, and they even buy advertising for this article. So it's it, it's also it's also good. Um, it's, in, it's quite cheap. Um, about sponsorship and uh, 
about our other relations. I think that uh, my colleague Rina tell you uh, some aspects also about social um, responsibility, and uh, uh, then uh, we will discuss maybe on some points uh, together and answer your question. So, Irina, please. I will put some main points and my telephone. A few words about my background. Uh, all my life I was connected with the PR and marketing. It was about event management, TV projects, about studying like luxury brand management in Singapore, working in Belport and in London. But every time, uh, as more I was living or studying or working somewhere abroad, in one year or year and a half, I was always uh, I want, wanted to come back because maybe it's kind of mentality. Independent on the comfort uh, of the way of living wherever, I don't know, in Monaco, in Milan, in London, in Singapore. But anyway, when you was born here, when you feel understand people here, so it's mine, it's native. It can be okay, bribes, it's maybe okay sometimes coming somewhere with the weapons and masks, but, but it's mine, it's native. I understand this. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you will be so, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I like uh, our market, I don't see huge problems in the bags with money, so I'm like to cut it out here, <laughs> working in official lobby. Um, uh, what, uh, for last year's project I was involved in, it was more about politician companies in, uh, of course, political politician companies in uh, Belport and Jure in London. Uh, when I was going there, I thought that I'll have some unbelievable huge experience, but frankly speaking, uh, I guess they got from me more because <laughs> uh, they got some connections because when you want to realize some projects or when you work with some internet cleaning companies and so on, uh, it's so bureaucracy systems there in international big company that I, uh, I uh, working there, I used my connection here, like working with some internet uh, companies, uh, internet cleanings, I worked with my guys and actually when I left, they keep working with my guys, <laughs> some of managers. With, with internet cleaning, you mean that, that uh, when there's negative uh, sentiment on Google about a person that you what make any spirit? What do you mean with internet cleaning? cleaning. Uh, I mean negative uh, cleaning of negative information okay. about somebody. I mean, okay. Because it's a political PR company yes. and so it's the main interest of these companies. Uh, but is it just deleting or how huh? does it work? Is it just deleting or how does it work? No, 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 of course you can uh, You can just... Uh, <laughs> I mean the process uh, of <laughs> internet cl cleaning companies, it's like uh, one way it's you can write directly to each website yeah, or some, or some official letter mm -hmm. uh, and the other way you can uh, create some good points, good information and put it so much so bad information is so far, yeah. oh, okay. it's too main official way to clean and some more other things when of course uh, you use some IT guys who can just uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay so and, and actually when I was working there I connected uh, some managers with Katya who actually has uh, much better and closer uh, connections with the same uh, Brussels, Washington uh, media and so uh, sh sh her connections were much easier to uh, make some publications uh, to, uh, to, give, to give result. Uh, after a few years I was the director of our national contest Miss Ukraine so we did some uh, so my, my kind of PR it's more about social life uh, a bit a, a bit social, a bit working some with social like orphans houses or this kind and some uh, events, contests, uh, this, this kind of work. So um, what are the main points which uh, still working on our market uh, still uh, seems weird to me. Um, how it works talking with magazines, with the covers of magazines. Uh, all over the world it's very prestigious when uh, for, for any
any person, for politician, for a star, it's very prestigious to be on the cover of some cool magazine. Mm -hmm. In Ukraine, all covers, they first try to sell this, uh, <laughs> and they, they um, it's not much difference for them who will be on the cover, uh, they try to sell it. The same situation with uh, television, like all over the world, uh, TV uh, pay money for translations or some huge tournaments, huge to uh, concerts, huge uh, contests, etc. In Ukraine, they try also to earn money on these events. Like even when uh, when I was director, I mean just maybe two months as I've quit it because I decided to change um, more interest for me in this David Lynch Foundation and uh, working on uh, this um, promoting and uh, uh, projects of foundation in this post-Soviet Union market. Um, and when we proposed uh, our national first five uh, on ratings uh, channels uh, to show this Miss Ukraine national contest uh, final. Uh, it was impossible from year to year to make it by free. We always had to pay for that. So we pay for all shooting and we pay for the time uh, on the channel. So maximum what I could do for three years that we didn't pay any more for uh, the time for the channel, uh, but we still had to pay for shooting and we had to use their team that was, a, that was like paying uh, the same for the time. <laughs> yes, so the system, how it works. It's unbelievably weird, it's strange, and especially I had a proposition for the channels, for example, like, okay, let's, we can try to arrange for you uh, shooting for free of uh, Miss World or Miss Universe World Final. They told, uh, okay, we can make a discount for you, you pay less, I told, we pay less. <laughs> All over the world, channels pay for this. Uh, Ukraine, no. It's, I guess it's um, the nearest five, ten years. I don't believe that something can change in this case. It's unbelievably weird, but that's how it works. <laughs> because TV, um, TV is a really great power in Ukraine. Uh, Katya was talking about social uh, networks, but uh, the main thing about it, I see the problem, is the coverage in connection. Uh, it can be unbelievably cheap, this internet, but it doesn't matter if you go uh, like 20 minutes uh, away from Kyiv, yeah, on the road, on the train, doesn't matter. And you don't have, not even 3G, 4G, you have E. <laughs> not everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter how much it costs if that doesn't work, yeah? And uh, as, uh, as being a director of uh, Miss, U Miss Ukraine, I had to visit all local small contests. I was visiting during first year, then I was trying to avoid visiting, visiting it at all, because uh, some places it's even difficult to get there, there is no plane, there is no train, so you should use train and car, or go by car, uh, and so I was... Uh, <laughs> I, I had fun about it on the first year. <laughs> and internet really, even in some cities that considered to be quite huge, uh, from region to region of the city, uh, it's really trouble with internet. I mean, we talk, not, we talk about the power of TV for the nearest 10 years for sure. Uh, last year we did some uh, online media project, like online reality show with uh, China. Uh, so we showed, uh, we, I had the Chinese partner and we were showing like our everyday usual life of uh, our main office, uh, the process of castings, of negotiating, of preparation, of everything. It was, uh, we put cameras all over the office, it was like really a very cool project. And it was the first project in inner Chinese market and it was on the biggest, on three biggest uh, online platform of China. We had all, like the audience of uh, one platform, like 120 uh, million people, and the, pro the audience of our project was uh, up to uh, 20 million people in online, watching online, and then in repeat uh, up to 50 million people. 
and uh, in in the China when we were negotiating, like uh, online uh, <coughs> platforms had the most power because everybody is online. Everybody. They told like, oh, TV is for old grannies already. So, mm. but in Ukraine, TV has the most power, uh, really. And if we're talking about opinion leaders and how how do they appear from where they appear, they appear from TV mainly. Mm. Uh, talking about okay, it um, depends on the target audience, uh, the age of target audience. If it's uh, average like 15, 20, 25 years, yeah, of course, it's social networks because independent uh, independent on income uh, people want to have smartphones they're ready to not to eat few months but to buy iPhone <laughs> or okay. to get iPhone or to get for present or uh, they are obsessed with uh, all this stuff but if we're talking about an average age of uh, 35 uh, 40 45 50 it's of course it's TV and if, if we talk about coverage not only the biggest cities of Ukraine but all over Ukraine most population uh, and so when some opinion leaders uh, make strategies they want to promote themselves they know that the first way TV shows they should be TV host of any shit program doesn't matter <laughs> on just TV the main is to get to TV uh, you can weather forecast uh, like we have uh, at least three really star uh, and the opinion uh, social stars and opinion leaders that were just uh, TV host like uh, weather for forecast <laughs> so it's the power the power of TV the same like we have uh, a designer, very famous Ukrainian, and the town. He's, uh, I guess, the only designer who really earned good money on being a designer in Ukraine. Uh, the rest is just, uh, I don't know, just, just like it. <laughs> it's not about money. And uh, his strategy was the same. He was uh, a designer in clothes, and uh, parallelly he was a TV host of uh, one project, then another project, one channel, another channel, and then. Uh, He's a star. Uh, when we were traveling with him to some small cities in Ukraine, and really people on the street come and ask to sign to make a picture, and now that gives income for him because uh, he uh, he's selling uh, franchise for his shops. Uh, he's got first line, couture line, second line, hundreds of different collaborations. Only due to his uh, to to the power of being a star, like TV star. Mm. What else points? Uh, my God, I forgot. Uh, maybe about social responsibility and uh, mm. about work with local communities with uh, kids. This activity from your experience. Mm. One one mm -hmm. few more points. Uh, talking about collaborating with journalists. Uh, if you once paid. Uh, we can talk about political campaign, it's the same about social events. Uh, the, uh, it's important thing collaborating with a journalist. It's not so many professional journalists in Ukraine. They all stay on the market, like they can change uh, web for some editorial for TV, but they're still the same group of people. And so if it consider, it seems like, oh, Ukraine is a big country. But uh, it's not so big actually. So if you are professional on the market, whatever you do in few years, in five, if ten years, you know everybody in all spheres. I mean the main, the main uh, players of the market in PR, in marketing, in policy, in business, and somehow it's everything connected. So when you work with journalists, if you once paid for some uh, <laughs> for, for some materials. You pay forever. Uh, uh, working, okay, maybe in political so you PR you can't avoid. <laughs> I mean, you can't avoid paying for articles. Uh, but when I when I was working with some uh, with events, with uh, TV programs, with uh, my contest, um, my principal position was not to pay. So it's better to create some very cool event. It's better to uh, invite some uh, opinion leaders, some our local stars, superstars and they will come, they will write. There is not so much information to write about. So you should be just very creative and create some uh, good point of event. Mm, if it's, yes. Do you ever send out press releases for free publicity? Or? Huh? 
press releases? Do you ever send out press releases? I mean, do we use it in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, uh, when we talk about event, mm -hmm. we write a press release and um, uh, we send for some media media holdings in form agencies. At least there are two in form agencies, quite huge and with a very good coverage. Uh, I'm working. I have uh, two PR groups I collaborate with, and they uh, they send. Yeah, they send release. Okay. And if it's good enough, if it's quite interesting for them, with pleasure they will uh, they will print it everywhere. This, it's not it's not like in po political PR so difficult. It's quite yeah. easy. You need just a bit creativity. Yeah. You just need to be not lazy to mm -hmm. write good material, interesting material, to make good event. Uh, <coughs> Just sometimes you need a few cool ideas and it's not so difficult to make it, to create it in the Ukrainian market. You can watch uh, some ideas from other countries that was used 5-10 uh, years ago and it would be quite innovative. <laughs> it could be quite innovative for Ukraine, talking about events, uh, concerts, uh, social lives. So, collaborating with journalists uh, in this sphere, which is not too political, not too big business, uh, the main point is better not to pay. Use creativity. And also, another big point, which I found from my experience collaborating with journalists with uh, some PR press conferences, that um, it's very important to make uh, like reception. I'm talking about reception drinks, reception presents for journalists. <laughs> it's really important. Because if you make some uh, press conference and you don't do this, because journalists, they come, they always hungry, they, if you don't do this, uh, forget. You can forget yeah. about materials. Same, uh, same <laughs> they won't bring it. I mean, they will write, but maybe, but if you uh, if you can afford to make some drinks and some small uh, snacks, uh, uh, you'll have maybe 18% more effective uh, your PR company <laughs> if you don't do that. <laughs> it's not because they're so bad, it's just uh, specific of the market. Yeah. And, uh, and not to pay, because if you pay, paid once uh, for one of them, uh, information in a while, in five minutes, it will spread all over Ukraine, and then uh, they, even if after uh, the next step, even working with another project, with another um, very cool something, very very cool and innovative, but they already know. Oh, a few years ago, he paid. I know for this guy, my colleague. Hmm. No, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> Because it's, Ukraine is small, yeah, and the market is small, and everybody everybody know each other. Yeah. Mm. Social networks, uh, so social networks, uh, it's very powerful when it's going about uh, some uh, age of the audience. Depends if you work with audience like 15, 20, 25, yeah, of course, it's Instagram, it's Facebook. For example, talking about contest, Miss Ukraine contest, uh, we had castings all over Ukraine. Uh, first year, we tried to make like live casting, uh, so we really visited all the main cities of Ukraine. Some of them I even didn't know they exist. Uh, some of them I would like, I, would, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, finally, we spend a lot of time for that. We spend a lot of money for this logistic, for advertising of all these like live castings. And then we realize that there, they, it's, it has no sense because uh, this target audience of this age, they really obsessed of having all uh, smartphones, uh, uh, computers, iPads, everything, and they all are in Instagram and Facebook, especially in Vkontakte, this Russian network. And the people st still use it with some special programs. For example, I still use Mail.ru, which is not allowed, but I got used to it. My, uh, I, don't know, I use it for 10 years, so I still use it with a special program. I uh, can enter my uh, email. Yeah. <laughs> when it's, uh, so when maybe you are a Russian agent? Never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, if we have problem in Ukraine, uh, everybody says it. It's Russian agent. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also when. Uh, 
uh, when we're talking about uh, the power of social network and the target audience uh, you are oriented for, uh, if you if you talk about uh, your clients or your audience's uh, generation of like 90s, uh, some of people uh, and of course uh, and especially when your clients is uh, from 90s. I mean, the age of, not not the age of when where they are born, but the age of de developing in business. Um, so these people are the most powerful. They mostly have money, but uh, specific of these people that they most of them uh, don't use social no networks themselves. So they are they don't they don't know they use specialists, but themselves they don't use it at all. And some of them even don't have mails, don't have messengers. Some of them, I mean, kind of oligarchs, they use like SMS or telephone or talk on meeting. When you have Skype, WhatsApp, Viber, WeChat, what? Uh, uh, they also use sometimes Signal and the uh, secret chat Telegram because it's uh, mm -hmm. still uh, they they <laughs> believe that uh, it's not it's it can be read. <laughs> yeah. This so I don't know if it's really true, but uh, but that's it. Mm. In Russia they say so. Huh? In Russia they say so. Which which? In Russia they In say Russia. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so. To